Custom mobs. You've likely seen them before and they can be a lot of fun. But what about in data packs? How many custom mobs have you seen that have been made using data packs? Is it possible to make mobs with complex AIs in vanilla Minecraft? I set out on a journey to see how I would fare against recreating some of Lethal Company's monsters in Minecraft. Last video, I created Lethal Company, although I didn't include any of the monsters. This time, I'm taking the monsters out of the facility and into the caves of the overworld. In data packs, custom mobs can be done in a few ways. One way is to use an item model and attach it to another mob. This is a good method, although it cannot be animated very easily. So in comes Animated Java, a block bench plugin designed by Snave and a few others that allows you to create and animate models in Blockbench and export them as many item displays. You still need to have another mob as AI, and you have a few options. I'll go into these later. When I first found out about Animated Java, I first used it to create a custom mob for a backrooms map I was designing. I based it off the creature from Escape the Backrooms, but made it small. The eye for these creatures was a baby zombie, and it would teleport the nearest model to itself every tick. The problem was, whenever there were many close together, models could sometimes be dropped, leaving a random critter and an invisible zombie in need of improvement. My second model came in at my first video edited with Premiere Pro. In fact, there are multiple mobs in that video. It was a very similar system, although instead of a baby zombie, it was a pig. This did all I needed, to be honest. Pretty simple. The next use of anime Java was quite intensive, and that was the Yahya Mice Escape Room. What? Dude! Dude! What the fuck is that? <laughs> There were a bunch of animated Java rigs again, but this time I used a Wandering Trader for them because I thought it would fit better. With Wandering Traders, you can have them go to any position you want with the pathfinding of a regular mob. Great! This started a bit of a new era for me making custom creatures. The next use was indoors, actually for the figure. It would wander around, then change target to any position that movement was detected, and that's about it. Although it was a step up from having it just go after the player, like all the other things I've done with Wandering Traders. The next mob was in the Oak House Murder, one of my best maps to date. Here, if the player is upstairs, it would go towards the ladder, then go after the player. Same with the player on the bottom floor. This brings us to now, where I'm going to attempt much more complex systems that have never been done before. From my past experiences, there are some things I've learned that are almost always in my mobs these days. These things are the animation controller, and more recently, a working teleportation function. For the animation controller, I've gone through a lot of variations, but often I've settled on one of two things. For most of the previously mentioned mobs, they don't actually have an idle animation, as is not normally seen since they're always moving. Although for mobs that don't always instantly kill the player, it needs an idle animation along with animations correctly playing. What I've done recently is add the absolute value of X and Z motion together, and then check if it's above a certain number. Why isn't it included as I don't want it to be walking in air? That's weird. This often requires some tuning, depending on the speed of the mob. Next is teleportation. Throughout making mobs, almost all of my recent mobs have different systems, although most teleport the nearest model to itself, since there is often only one existing in the world, specifically in maps. One of the more recent systems I found is the ID system, where it will teleport the model with a matching number to the Wandering Trader, although seemingly that has some quirks. Even more recently, I found an even better system, where it will only teleport models that haven't been previously teleported, fixing the error with models being left behind. I'm gonna probably use this for all my future mobs, as it's the best method I've found. Now that we have the basics of custom mobs out of the way, it's time to introduce the three complex mobs I've created. The first mob is the Jester because I thought it'd be funny. The reason why this mob exists was because I was going to mess with an SMP with it. The eye is extremely simple for this one. Go after a targeted player, and if it's hit, change targets. That wasn't complex or not done before. The unique thing was how it moved. Instead of having just a wandering trader, there is also a llama. The reason why there is a llama of all creatures is because it's capable of walking up blocks instead of having to jump. If I combine the pathfinding of a trader and the stepping ability of a llama, the jester could be much faster than the player in most cases. I was able to pull this off by moving the llama in the direction of where the wandering trader was looking by using motion so that it couldn't phase through blocks. If I were to use teleportation instead, it would bypass the collision of blocks. I summon a marker in front of the llama, get the distance of it from the llama, and then add that to the motion. This does cause it to never stop moving, but that was fine if it was able to chase players well. For the most part, the AI was pretty simple. After having the jester close to the target for around 10 seconds, it will start winding up, which changes the motion of the trader and llama to nothing. And then once it pops, it changes it to become a lot faster. Also, if the jester is within a two block tall space, it can crouch, which makes it a lot more terrifying when chasing you. 
This isn't really for functionality rather than effect since it could already do that. It just have its head clipping through and that's not cool. For the spawning of this creature, I want to do something unique. If you mine a bunch of deep slate diamond ore, it will try to spawn. When it's trying to spawn, it will try to appear close to the target, specifically in the same cave system. It does this by replacing a random cave entity that has a similar Y level to the player to ensure that it's in the same cave and also within 15 to 30 blocks distance to ensure that it does not just materialize in front of the player. After making this and playing the original game a lot more, I've been starting to find some inconsistencies with my version versus the original. The main two I've noticed is acceleration while angry and when it winds up. In the original, it seems to endlessly speed up until it has caught the player, whereas with mine, it only speeds up if a player is nearby. Also with the wind up, the original seems somewhat spontaneous and random. It might dependent on how long it's been within two blocks of the player. Other than that's pretty cool. The second mob was the hoarding bug, which was by far the most complex mob I've ever done. It has around five different AIs rather than just one or two. Initially it wanders around caves, but when a player is nearby holding a rare item, which is an item on this list, it will change AI to beg for items in front of the player. With this state, it will try to keep its distance from the player, but also try and stay close, kind of like a ring shape around the player. After a while of not receiving an item, it will change state to angry, which means if the player tries to get closer, it will attack and fly towards the player. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as the previous AI state. This attack state goes off of motion mainly, and it gets the direction of the player and adds motion in that direction. This often causes it to go in a circle around the player, but it's also incredibly difficult to avoid because of its speed when it's flying. Although if you give it an even rare item, which is also on this list, it will go to the place it spawned in and place it down. Here it will guard the item and even hold it if the player gets close. If a player grabs the item, it will become angry and attack. Same with attacking it. And these are all states that I made for the hoarding bug, although for some reason it's horrifically unoptimized, so I limited the amount that can appear to 12. The third and final mob I created was a snare flea, which is a bug which hangs on the ceiling of caves, then falls onto an unsuspecting player. This one is pretty typical with no special pathfinding, although the unique part was latching onto the player's head, and also the grappling to the ceiling, and also onto tall grass. While making this one, there were some quirky glitches to say the least. But a nice simple mod to end it off. Also, real quick, guys, I would like to thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. I have been doing YouTube for quite a long time, and I never expected I would get this far. This truly means a lot to me, and I truly am very grateful. That's enough of me rambling. Adios.